I didn't do anything. Okay, Pedic V, we have concluded learning all about the artifacts, the different pieces of furniture that were in the Beis HaMikdash. And from this point onward, we begin to analyze the Beis HaMikdash schematic, the actual structure. We haven't talked about that at all. Evan Hoysa, B'Kodesh HaKadoshim B'Ma'aravi. There was a stone in the Holy of Holies, which was on the western end of the compound. Okay, so the, the, the Har Habayit is a very, very large area. The temple, as we're going to learn, was towards the north side. North pushed back to the west. So it was the northwest area, doesn't mean northwest corner, but the northwest area of the Har Habayis. The actual temple mount is, is like it's like round or square. It's like a it's not it's not it's not oblong, but the Beis Hamikdash was primarily rectangle. It's a long structure. Right? It's a long compound, and towards the west half, that's where you have the actual structure, and in the back of that structure is the Kodesh Hakadoshim. So when we prayed in the Beis Hamikdash, we were facing west, and in this chamber, this inner sanctum, that was on the far west of the temple compound there was a stone on this stone the ark the proverbial golden ark with the cherubim rested on this stone and just before it was a jug of manna which had been preserved from the Jewish people's sojourn in the desert as well as the staff of Aaron that miraculously blossomed following the dispute and rebellion of Korach and his friends. When King Solomon built the base of Migdosh, that in the end the Beit HaMikdash will be laid to waste and destroyed. So in, in preparing the structure, he built a chamber, a space, in which the Aaron would someday be entombed. Lemata, underneath, bematmeinies akumais va'akalkalis, in a whole labyrinth maze of tunnels. Labyrinth. V'yeshayoh ha'melech, and Yeshayoh ha'melech, who was the king in Judea approximately 35 years before the Beis Hamikdash was destroyed. Tziva, he gave the order, it was entombed, hidden away in the place that Shlomo had originally built for it. Shanemar, as it is written, he said to the Levites who understood, the, the who, so to speak, understood on behalf of all the Israelites who were holy to Hashem, to knew as the place, the ark, in the home that Shlomo has built for it, the son of David, Melech Yisrael. Now there's no issue of carrying it on the shoulder. You got to get it into this tunnel, series, labyrinth series of tunnels, and that's where you're going to place it, which is what they did. And they placed, along with that, the staff of Aaron, and the Tzin Senet, and the Shemen HaMishcha, the special anointing oil that was crafted by none other than Moshe Rabbeinu. The Ramam goes on to tell us that V'chol Elu, all of these things, meaning the Ark, the manna, the blossoming staff, as well as the Shemen HaMishcha, which was used to anoint high priests, as well as kings, did not come back to the Jewish people at the Bayat Sheni. Va'af urim v'tumim shahoyu b'bayat Sheni, even the gemstones that covered the Kohen's special, Kohen Gadol special breastplate, with which the Jewish people were able to communicate with Hashem and get answers to very important questions of national defense, security, or importance, the Kohen Gadol obviously had to wear a breastplate because otherwise not a Kohen Gadol, but it wasn't functioning. And we know that Rosh wore it. wore a breastplate, but it didn't work. Right, no, no, no. It didn't function. And we know this, as it's written, until the Kohen will rise again to the Urim V'tumim, which is a Pasuk in Ezra, and it's a euphemism, which we use to say, People like to use sophisticated language to say when they say Mashiach will come, when they say when the Kohen Gadol is wearing the Urim V'tumim again. 
So why did they have it in the second base of Migdash? It was only Lahashlim, Shmona Begadim, the Kohen Gadol, because there's a halacha that the Kohen Gadol has to have eight different vestments. So you have to have those vestments, Shaloyeh Begadim, so you shouldn't be, so to speak, missing clothes. This halacha in the Rambam, on the surface, seems totally inexplicable. The Rambam is a book of halachas. Pray tell, what difference in halacha does it make? If when Shlomo HaMelech built a base of Migdash, that he built a place to put buried treasure. Furthermore, Shlomo HaMelech, it seems, this is on his own accord. The Rambam says, Shlomo HaMelech, Be'et Shabana Shlomo, Shlomo's building. Ve'yada, and he knew, Shasayfi Lechadev, and the end is going to be destroyed. So, Bonabai, he built. What do you mean Shlomo HaMelech built? When it came to building the base of Migdash, we have this Pasuk that says, Hakol B'Ksav Miyada Hashem Alai Hiskil. Was ordained, was directed from on high. This is what the base of Migdash Hashem told them to build. That's how he built the structure schematic, the, the temple schematic. So how did he decide on his own to build something? I mean, how? He did whatever he did. But why is that part of the halachas of base of Bechira? Why is that part of the halachas of... This is the temple schematic. We should be talking about what Hashem instructed Shlomo HaMelech. That's something he did on his own. But there's still differences between the first Bet Migdash and the second. So there are slight structural differences. That is c- correct. The Ramam told we, we learned about this. Many moons ago already. We learned that the Rambam says that they followed the basic structure of the first base of Migdash, whose foundations were still standing and were still identifiable, but they also followed the instructions that's written in the book of Ezekiel for the third base of Migdash. So the second base of Migdash was kind of a, a conjunction of, of, of the old and the future, the past and the future. Now, another interesting thing over here is the Rambam in the, in the p- chapter we just finished yesterday talks about the kalim, the artifacts. We went through the menorah. We went through the table. We went through the altar. Yes? The ark? We don't talk about the ark. That's a, that's a subject actually for a, a different day. Why the ark isn't even mentioned. But if we're talking about the ark to some degree, we're not talking about fashioning the ark because there was no new ark fashion. But we don't need the ark to do mitzvahs. We don't, a, we don't need the ark to do mitzvahs. B, that's correct. B, the ark was never replicated. It's only one ark. Right. So there's no mitzvah of bu- building an ark. Fine. I'm not, even, I'm not even going into that now. But he's talking about the ark. So if you're talking about the placement of the ark, should not the placement of the ark appear in the Rambam alongside the placement of the menorah, the placement of the shulchan, the placement of the golden altar? Why do we talk about it here? So the Rebbe answers this question with a phenomenal chiddush, with an incredible concept. The Rebbe says like this. The truth is, the truth is, that when the Kohen Gadol would go into the Holy of Holies, what was he going into? If there's no Aaron, it's not a Holy of Holies. We just designate an empty room. We say, okay, this, this room is the Holy of Holies. What makes it a Holy of Holies? You have to have, so to speak, the battery in place if you want the machine to work. What made it a Holy of Holies? And the Rambam does acknowledge that in the second Beis Hamikdash there were some things missing, but the Beis Hamikdash is a Beis Hamikdash. So the Rebbe says, the bottom line is that Shlomo HaMelech built a Kodesh HaKadoshim above ground and he built a Kodesh HaKadoshim beneath the ground. And that's why if you look in the language that the Rambam uses, he uses the word Be'es Shabbat Shlomo HaBayit Bonabo Mokom Lignos Lemata. It was a Makom Lemata. There was a Makom Lemala and a Makom Lemata. A place on top, above ground and a place in the labyrinth maze beneath the ground. And in doing so, Shlomo HaMelech actually created two possible homes for the ark. There's the above ground place for the ark and the beneath ground place for the ark. True, when, the, when it's beneath the ground, it's not seen. And when it's not seen, the various things with the Wi-Fi doesn't work because it's too deep in the ground. So the breastplate doesn't work. And we says the Shekhinah wasn't really there in an overt way because the ark is in a sense, exiled, subterranean, it's beneath the ground. However, nonetheless, it is in its rightful place. And, and, and certainly when Shlomo HaMelech built this chamber, this secret chamber, he built it with the intention as he was instructed by Hashem. Because he knew that there has to be two places for the ark. There's the glorious days, and there's the exiled days. Two different places. And therefore, as such, as such, that means, if you really think about it, the Rebbe says, the three Bate Migdash are not mutually exclusive. 
because the Beit HaMikdash that stood the second time and the Beit HaMikdash that will Be'ezrat Hashem stand the third time is all a continuation of a Beit HaMikdash beneath the ground that was never destroyed. Even if the foundations aren't visible anymore, ultimately the foundations we, that will be built for the third Beit HaMikdash are connected to the labyrinth that's beneath the ground. And that's not just tunnels. That was the special place which Shlomo HaMelech built to house the Ark, the Aron HaKodesh. Well, we don't know where it is. We do not know where it is. And I will guarantee you, we will not find it until the coming of Mashiach. That's not the point, though. The point is that a whole, our, our holy mountain continues to house the Ark as it always did, only now it's in an exilic reality rather than a free reality. So and now, once you learn this way, you understand the Ramam's halacha. This is the halacha. He's explaining to you how the Beis HaMikdash is a Beis HaMikdash, even when the most important artifact doesn't seem to be present at all. Yeah, but it still it says he built underneath <coughs> the, the Gniza. Gniza, it's like no, Gniza Gne, Gne, because it could be used euphemistically as a place to hide old Sifrei Torah or old holy books. Gniza just means hidden. So yes, it was built in a hidden way. And, and Yashayah HaMelech hid it away when it was still tremendous wealth and opulence. Do you know there was an amazing find yesterday in Israel? At least it was announced yesterday. They, they found remnants from the Babylonian destruction. That's the destruction we're talking about. And they say there's evidence of enormous wealth. And we know that Yeshua HaMelech, 35 years before the destruction of the first base of Migdash, lived with an incredible economy. Yeah. Enormous wealth. Yeshua didn't put this as the Babylonian soldiers were coming with their spears. He was running, you know, five steps ahead like in some drama movie. 35 years before. In other words, when everything was as it should be. But Yeshua knew the time is now. And so the Beis HaMikdash continued to function. It, the the Aaron was in the Beis HaMikdash, only it was no longer visible. And so the Aaron remained in the Beis HaMikdash, in the second Beis HaMikdash, and the Aaron remains there, waiting for the third Beis HaMikdash to be rebuilt speedily in our days, at which time the Aaron and the manna and the staff will all come back to its rightful place above ground. And of course the Ur of Atumim will function perfectly then. May it be speedily and in our days. Amen. Amen. Yeah.